All right, this is gonna be a shorter video because it's not the type of stuff that I want to talk about anymore. I'd rather play other games and make videos on other games that are good than like talk about this. But I want to inform you guys and share my thoughts on what's happening with Star Citizen right now. So if you don't know, prepare yourself to press F in chat or like in, in comments because a lot of very important people have left Star Citizen. But let's talk about it. Hello, my name is All right, so in short, there were already some rumors about CEG restructuring some of the teams and that this will mean that there will be some layoffs. But I have never seen a restructuring in any gaming company or in any other industry for that matter that would lead to firing the top people. Sure, companies will fire the top people if there is a scandal surrounding their names or if the company itself got bought by a bigger company. I have also seen companies firing most of the devs after they finished the project, but I have never seen a company starting to focus on a project and then firing the people that have been keeping that project alive for years. As far as we we know Todd Pappy, Vincent Sinatra, Dane Kubica, or I'm, I'm probably butchering the name, and Jay Cross left. Dan Troffing is still not confirmed, but his Spectrum profile badge has changed from staff to backer. The same thing happened with Todd Pappy's Spectrum profile, but after a day or so, his profile got deleted off of Spectrum. There are some other rumors that some other lead devs are also leaving or are already fired, but I will not mention them by name because their names haven't been leaked yet. But let's talk about Todd Pappy. He was basically the main guy for Star Citizen and he's not a part of CAG anymore. And you can confirm it yourself by looking at his LinkedIn profile. Honestly, he was one of the few guys that felt like he was genuine. Because whenever Jared asked him why some of the gameplay features are not in the game yet, he would say that the Star Citizen teams are very undermanned because most of the company is working on Squadron 42. And he would look like he was very frustrated by the fact that he doesn't have enough people working on the game, while the only thing that CG has to show and that makes money is in fact Star Citizen. And listen, this is just my conclusion. You can go and rewatch uh, all their Star Citizen lives that he was in and you can like see for yourself but i think that like he was very frustrated with the state of the company and that he only had a skeleton crew to work with so what i'm saying is if that is true if my assumptions are true uh, it is very symptomatic that he left right now because most of the squadron 42 teams are integrating with the skeleton crew that was working on star citizen for x amount of years so one would think that it would be something that he wanted the whole time but the important thing here is that he was one of the most successful and respected leaders in CAG. He came to CAG from Crytek, where he worked as a game director. But before that, he worked in Sony's um, Santa Monica studio, Atari, and Midway. So he's not a guy that you should let go that easy. Especially if you consider the state of Star Citizen. Yes, it is in development for 13 years now, and it is in a very broken state, but it was ran by a skeleton crew for the past seven years that he was the live game director. So if you take that into consideration, the game has actually seen a lot of progress. I mean, it hasn't, but uh, like, considering the fact that like nobody was fucking working on it, it has seen a lot of progress. And this is something that I say all the time. It is amazing that Star Citizen even works considering the amount of people that were working on it, and the scope that it wants to bring. And Top Pappy is surely one of the reasons why Star Citizen is where it is right now. And I'm not saying that it's in a great state, but every now and then, we hear that like two to four guys who worked on a long-awaited feature or that one of the features that was broken for a while got worked on and fixed by an intern in his spare time and then you start to realize why everything takes so much time and why the game is so goddamn broken and it's obvious that some of the things are changing right now we're getting the preview channels with pyro and the replication layer and we got much more content 
rate in fixes in the past four months than we did basically in the past four years. And I don't know if CG as a company is changing because of lack of growth, but I would say that the changes that I saw so far from a player's perspective are very pleasing. That is, until I saw that some of the people like Top Happy got laid off. And look, I can understand downsizing due to the company itself not having financial growth like it had in the past few years up until uh, 2023. And I can also understand that they need to downsize because they finished the project. But I can't understand getting rid of the key people that were keeping the game alive while the whole company was focusing on a side project that was kept away from the backers' eyes. And I'm speaking as a backer right now, like it's very concerning. Because we have grown to love and trust certain people in this company. And we have watched them for years, just for them to get laid off the moment the company starts focusing on that very game that they kept alive that we backed for almost a decade and a half ago. And bear in mind that some of us backed the game or like invested even more into the game because of these guys and their reassuring words. And sure, yes, nobody's supposed to work in the same place forever and we already saw it with Paul Johns leaving in 2022. Actually, his whole team left and went to Ubisoft. Nobody has to work in a place that they don't like or where they're not getting paid as much as they should. But I think that we all can agree that losing people like Todd Pappy and Dan Truffin or even Jake Cross is very weird at this point in time. Jake Cross was the lead producer and he was employed by CAG for 10 years. And he was a direct contributor or an active driver for over 25 major live releases for Star Citizen. And I would say that he was also one of the top guys just because of that. On the other hand, Dan, Dan Truffin, was working on most of the PU related stuff including base building. And I have to ask now, did they put a pin in base building like they did with the Banner Merchantman when Paul Jones left? Because like it's been two years and it's fascinating that they still haven't found a team to replace the guys that were working on the BMM. So should we expect the same to happen with base building? Like if the rumors are true and then Troffin like actually got fired? Like look, they all seem like great people and none of them made an angry post on LinkedIn about them getting laid off. Todd was basically the only one not to post anything about him being a part of CAG anymore, he just, just like changed his status and Dan isn't active on most of the social media platforms. But with the absence of a written statement by CAG, it all just looks super weird. But like, looking at the posts that the other guys made on LinkedIn, I'm sure that it's not a scandal that made them leave. Like, assuming that at this point would be just stupid. So it looks like CG is just downsizing, but again it's weird to get rid of some of the top guys or for them to leave when this happens. I mean we all know that most of the companies downsize by firing people that have the least experience or employees that weren't working as hard as they should. So I can't tell you why any of this is happening right now and nobody can except CG themselves, but the lack of a statement from any of the sides seem very symptomatic to me. And everything that I said in this video or anything that anyone else says about this whole thing is pure speculation. Because none of us really know what's happening and I'm pretty sure that the devs themselves have an NDI that will last for a couple of years at least, so they will not be able to talk openly about what happens, why they got fired and like what's happening in CG, like at least in the near future. But I'm sure that the truth will unravel itself at some point and I'm hoping that it's not going to be too bad or too late. And when I say that I'm thinking about Blizzard and all of the controversy that is surrounding that company with a bunch of statements made by like ex-developers about how they were mistreated, underpaid, strongmanned and lied to for years while they were working overtime, just hoping that the promises that they got from the higher-ups will come true at some point, but it never happened. So they left or got fired. But one thing is certain, the gaming market is slowly shifting towards what it was two decades ago, and the companies will have have to follow those trends if they want to survive. Games like Baldur's Gate, Palworld, Lies of Pi, Armored Core, Helldivers are setting new standards and rules that AAA games like Star Citizen will have to follow if they want to live a long and prosperous and a healthy life. And one of those standards is not to overpromise and then underdeliver. And the second one is not to monetize every single fucking thing in the game. And that is exactly why companies like Activision Blizzard and Bungie are 
falling apart. And that's exactly what I was talking about eight months ago when I made a video that's called Greed is Killing the Gaming Industry, and you can watch it by clicking here, just like queue it up uh, in the next tab. Bungie had Destiny 2 completely locked up behind microtransactions, and every DLC that they released was worse than the one before it. Blizzard did the same with Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2. Overwatch is still one of the biggest competitive games out there, but it is getting killed by microtransactions and poor business decisions. So having a good game in its core will not help you if you let greed and marketing go nuts and destroy it for you, as it did with both of those companies, as they are under Sony and Microsoft now. So what I want to say is that layoffs in the gaming industry should not be considered a trend, even though some people would like to call it that, because every action has its reaction, and the layoffs are in fact a reaction to poor business decisions. So instead of minimizing layoffs and calling it a trend, we should call poor business decisions a trend and like get the facts fucking straight. And you can see it happening right now with Ubisoft's Skull and Bones. The game itself is so mediocre and unfun that it's like it has the whole community just baffled. Like what were they working on for 10 years? How did they make such a bad and like irrelevant game after 10 years of development? And why in the hell are they even talking about season passes and microtransactions? Like you know know that there are going to be layoffs very soon in some of their studios too. And at the same time, a small studio called Arrowhead releases Helldivers 2 and it takes over the world as one of the best co-op games we had in years. And even though the servers were hard to get onto because they didn't really expect this kind of a success and this many concurrent players, they worked their asses off the weekends just to get some fixes and like fix most of the issues. There are still some issues they couldn't fix in a day or two, but they compensated the players for the hassle. This is a business practice that AAA companies do not understand at all. Whether it's CAG or Activision Blizzard, their marketing teams think that they're God-given and that they will only experience growth without giving the players what they want or what they need. And when that kind of shit stops working, they resort to firing a bunch of people. So what I'm saying is, the future is not that certain for any company or any game, including Star Citizen. People will tear Squadron 42 apart if it's just mediocre. It needs to be great, purely because it was in development for 13 years. So let's come back to Star Citizen. I don't think that people are abandoning ship because the project is about to die, but it could be that there's something happening that we don't know of, and that maybe the higher-ups are leaving because they don't want to be a part of it. Again, all of this is pure speculation because none of us can know what's really happening. I mean, it could be that since they didn't see any growth in the last year, they got scared and they assumed that the same thing will happen this year, so they just started downsizing without understanding their community at all, and what they seem not to understand still is that we do not want ships, we want gameplay, and we've been asking for that for years. Once we get more progress in the game, CG will start growing again. But if they continue strawmanning us and blatantly lying about server meshing coming in 2018, 2019, or by the end of 2021, and then like 2022, and then 2023, they will lose all the respect and a lot of funding. I know for a fact that like for most of us, this year is a make or break kind of a year because you can fool me once with server meshing, you can fool me twice, but Jesus fucking Christ, if you fool me six times in a row and make a video on server meshing being worked on last January and showcase it last Citizen Con and you still don't release it and you manage to fool me again, then I'm just a fucking fool to you. So fuck you and I'm out. And again, we don't know if that's gonna happen or not. Uh, maybe Todd Pappy left because he knows that, that it's not gonna happen. So he was just fed up and he was just like, yeah, fuck it, I I'm gone. We do not know because there is no statement, like what the CAG didn't tell us anything. So it might be that some of them realized what's gonna happen, so they went searching for new jobs. But then again, it might be that Chris Roberts thought that replacing Todd Pappy with his Squadron 42 counterpart is going to work better because of reasons. I don't know. But again, without them telling us anything, it is just us speculating. And they probably won't even tell us anything. Or maybe they'll just like wish them luck in an open letter. But I believe 
believe that they will just let it blow over like they do with most of the things. But this could be a wake up call for the backers, like I wouldn't have to make this video if CAG dealt with this whole thing themselves and told us exactly what's happening with an open letter to the community and the people that got laid off. Like sure, we have heard that they're restructuring the Austin studio, but Todd was in Manchester, like most of these guys were, and there are certain rumors that indicate that two of their studios might be even closing, but we don't know much about it because CAG isn't telling us shit. But all that I can say here is that they will be missed, and that we need to keep a closer eye on what's happening inside CAG in the future, because this might have been a huge red flag and it will be very irresponsible for us to miss it. Anyway, I said that this video is gonna be shorter, but it wasn't, it's like already 15 minutes, so I'm sorry about that, but like the script itself was very short, and then I realized, and it's not my issue, honestly, that, like, honestly, this is you, this is on you guys, honestly, because like, every time when I say something, I need to explain to most of you that I'm not trying to be malicious, I'm like, there is no malice behind it, I'm just like, talking to you guys, I'm just like, saying the shit that's in my head, right? So the shit that is in my head right now is that I'm very thankful for you watching and I'm even more thankful for my supporters on YouTube and on Patreon. If you want to support me, the links are down there in the description of the video and uh, there's like a button to support on YouTube and also there's merch. I, I actually wore the merch uh, this time. It's awesome. Some people are wearing it. They, they love it. And uh, if you want to get it, you can get it. It's in the description of the video. Uh, and it's funny, I gotta get the new merch that, that I made, I just never got it. Um, so anyway, thank you for watching, and uh, have a nice day, and uh, don't forget to bring a towel when you're traveling to space. Bye.